Welcome back to Squawk Box. We are just over a half an hour away from the first opening bell on the second quarter. And I uh, want to bring in uh, Mark Mahaney to talk about uh, the Internet and uh, tech stocks and what he thinks is going to happen. Mark, of course, Everprise, I head of Internet Research. Good morning to you, Mark. Um, good morning, trying Andrew. To understand, and Journal's got a good piece on it today. You know, this idea that we have the Magnificent Seven, we're down to uh, the fabulous four, maybe. I don't know if you agree with that. And maybe that that's actually a good thing because you can see that the markets have actually uh, seemed to uh, remain resilient even in the face of three of those stocks not doing nearly as well. Is that is that a good way to think about this? I think it's a reasonable way. I'd probably still stick with the Fab Five. Uh, Fab Five. OK, who? so to, who's in your Fab Five? Well, the only one I'd add to what the journal had was uh, was Google. You've seen a nice recovery recently. I think there are just too many overhangs on Google. In fact, for the first time in, I think, three years, I actually prefer Google to Meta. We've had a wonderful run in Meta. And I think the, the overhangs, though, um, uh, so a lot fully appreciated about Meta. I think it can still rise. It's a compounder. What I'm struck by with Google is that... Uh, you know, there's a couple of things that I think are very fixable on their part in terms of their cost structure, in terms of actually paying a dividend. Wouldn't be hard for them to do that with $100 billion in cash. And then I think it's underappreciated as an AI asset. I know we had some controversy over some of the images did by Gemini, but the tool is extremely powerful. Of course, you're going to have problems, and it's never going to be perfect. But I think we're going to see ourselves using Google and Gemini more in the future. The, the regulatory issues are significant. There is one well, Mark, silver we, lining, and that's the—go ahead. How are you thinking about Google or Gemini in the context of what we keep hearing is going to come out from OpenAI in terms of leapfrogging again? I don't know where you think Claude is from Anthropic on a relative basis. It just feels like there's so much competition in this space and potentially other competitors that are ahead. Yeah, it's uh, it's a highly competitive space. I don't know that there are that many competitors. I mean, that the scale of resources and compute power and cash you need to really run these uh, models and run them at scale. The fact that maybe as a data point that Apple is outsourcing probably to Gemini, like if Apple doesn't want to do it themselves, and they got plenty of cash. But if they don't have the resources and the know-how, maybe that says something about how at the end of the day, there's just a handful of really do uh, this at the kind of scale that uh, that Microsoft is looking at and Google is what, looking what, at. What Gemini is, do, is doing is better than what the competitors are doing because the truth, and I'll be honest, I use Claude now. I use OpenAI, ChatGPT. I don't use Gemini because I don't find that the answers and the things that are coming back are at the same level. I, you know, they, these are hard things and they're going to constantly innovate. I'll just give you two, two quick, simple examples. You go ahead and run what is, why is it called March Madness? And how can I buy tickets to March Madness? And you just do that on Gemini, do it on ChatGPT, and you'll actually find the answers pretty similar, actually slightly better on Gemini. That's just a random example, but it's useful, it's timely. Uh, I, I think Google is in this race, but I, I think the more important point is I don't think they get a pre I think they're sort of more perceived by the market as Gen AI roadkill rather than as a derivative play. Look at what uh, uh, Meta was able to do in terms of improving its process, its products, its offerings of both consumers and advertisers. I think Google can do the exact same thing, is doing the exact same thing. That's not reflected in its stock. That's why I like Google here. Okay, so what do you think the stock should be worth in a year from now, if you're right? Oh, I think there's uh, upside. I think our price target's 160, but you know, could there be upside to 200? Yes, possibly. It's not our top pick. That remains Amazon, another one of those Fab Five names. And I'd still put uh, Meta up there, but I'd go Amazon first, Google second, third. And who's fourth and fifth? Well, in the uh, of, of the leave aside the the Fab Five in the internet space, we continue to like names like Dash and Expedia. Look, overall trends, I think demand trends are pretty positive this year. These companies have caught cost religion. They're not rehiring like it's 1999. So I think it's keep going up. I think we're going to have more shareholder friendly activities. I think Google's going to come out and surprise people and start paying a dividend. I think that's a positive for the sector. And then I think AI just as a fundamental tailwind is there. And you're seeing more and more examples of companies improving their products and processes using AI. So it's a good reason to stay long, kind of the highest quality names in the internet. 